Adding urea to a pool may, under some circumstances, be beneficial. So I set up a small-scale, non-scientific experiment to see what the effects are. I set up these two tanks a while ago just to show the principle of uh, making a pool with a separate swim zone from a planted zone. And these are only connected via these two pipes and the circulation between them is just driven by air here. Um, but what I've found is um, it's working really quite well, but these plants here are looking pretty anemic or uh, very yellow. So I think they might be nitrogen deficient. So if I just hold this board here, um, these should be a really sort of verdant green, but, but they're not. So I'm gonna try an experiment and give them some nitrogen fertilization to see whether uh, it bushes up the growth and that will then take out more phosphorus from the system and keep the water even cleaner. So that's the idea. So I'm going to use um, some of this. Now this is urea, believe it or not. And um, so the idea of adding urea does seem a bit counterintuitive but we'll give it a go so if we take one liter of water and here I'm using the the actual pond water not tap water because we don't add tap water and and about five grams which I think is about probably about that a sort of level teaspoon if I had something to level with it what I don't want to do is drop it in there the whole bag. Oh, put that to one side. Oh, sorry. I tipped it over. Right, there we go. I've got a very fertilized piece of grass there. Um, now, this should be very soluble. Um, mind you, um, this is in the form of what they call prills. Sort of a little little bits of crystal but uh, anyway so it might be a bit less soluble but there we go there's those things in there and so we've got five grams per liter and what i'm going to do i'm going to pour it directly onto the uh, onto these plants um, and see whether that will help so this is a floating plant island so the only way these plants can get nutrients is from the roots dangling down into that water um, so this is um, uh, it's going to be a, a, a nice added boost for them hopefully and this tank has also got lots of string algae now in this case the string algae is an ally because it's absorbing nutrients and this stuff is really quite fibrous so it comes out really easily uh, you can get other variants of um, blanket weed or this filamentous algae which is very slimy and very difficult to get out so this is great this stuff and so i'm nurturing this because that'll help me as well and i'm hoping that this algae will also grow a bit better with um, some added nitrates anyway we'll see so that's the experiment so far and um, just give it a bit of time i don't know we'll come back and look at it in about a week and see if there's any improved growth Oh, you know what I didn't do? <laughs> Quick, quickly, right, what I want to do before these two mix, in fact, I'm going to stop these two tanks mixing. I'm just going to measure the conductivity in the tank. Let's see what the, what the output is, what does it say? Um, 395, 395, which is pretty standard for, for an organic pool to be that sort of order. And, um, you know, maybe with that amount of salt I've added, effectively, the urea uh, crystals, urea sol solution, the conductivity should actually rise. So we'll see. Anyway, it's all part of the experiment. Four days later, and I can already see some changes. Most notably, the water has gone really clear. So I'm going to add another 5 grams of urea, but this time apply it directly to the base of the plants. Let's see what happens. 
It's been four weeks since I added the urea and there have been a few surprises happen. Firstly, if we look at these plants in this floating plant island, this plant here is miniature bulrush and it was very yellow and it is still very yellow and it's not really flourished very much, but it, there's a bit of green there. However, this is sweet gallingale and this plant has really done well. Now the plant has got its roots dangling down into the water so it gets its nutrients from the water only because there's no substrate in this floating plant island and so it's directly competing with single cell suspended algae that are in the water and what has happened is that the water has gone incredibly clear so there are very few uh, suspended single celled algae in here compared to what it was and that's because these plants have been allowed to flourish and now compete them. The surprising thing is that I did have blanket weed here and that's almost completely gone. And what's happened is there's been an explosion in the population of snails and they've completely decimated it. Now, whether adding urea has made the algae really incredibly tasty to the snails and, um, and as a consequence, it's been completely devoured I really don't know, but that's what I suspect the mechanism could be. It could just be a coincidence, who knows. But it's cleared single cell suspended algae and the filamentous algae. So quite, quite extraordinary, really. I'm gonna measure the conductivity. Now, when I measured the conductivity last time, it was 395, and I suspected that adding the salts of urea, uh, that adds effectively charged particles to the water, would uh, make the conductivity increase. However, the conductivity is slightly less. And um, there we go, 373, I think is it. Um, so as a, yeah, it's slightly less. So what's happened is that those, that urea has been absorbed by the bio biology of the water and is no longer present in the water. So what's the conclusion to all of this? Well, it seems like adding urea to plants that are struggling really helps encourage those plants and it uh, diminishes the presence of algae, filamentous algae and single cell suspended algae. So it seems like a very good thing. In moderation, you know where I spilt it here, it scorched the grass. So it just shows that too much fertilization is not a good thing. However, in moderate doses, it seems to work. So should you we in your pool well, most definitely not, because although urine contains urea, it also contains other substances we don't want, including phosphorus, which will feed the algae. So ironically, cause the problem we're trying to get rid of in the first place. Here, I'm trying to get rid of the water lily bugs that chew their way through the surface of the lilies. You wash them off, they can't get back on. I'm hosing down the leaves with water from a pond using a submerged pump, so I'm not adding any tap water. 